Hi. Hey, thank you for having me. Thank you for the very thoughtful uh, uh, that intro, well, in- opening kind of. Uh, well, you know, I can only take some responsibility for it because our friend Mitch out there, he was just showing us his pop punk music videos okay. on YouTube from his old band on the way in. Oh, amazing. So, What was the name of his band? What was the name of them? Colette Trudeau, who was in a band called Live on Release up in Canada. Okay. Who had a big hit, like a Canadian hit called I'm Afraid of Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. It was a bit of a, it was a, bit of a hit. In the 2000s? Then. Yeah, like yeah, what, 2008? That, was, that sounds very, very 2000s. Very Two, good. Yeah, it's have something like that. Uh, I, want to talk, I want to talk a little bit about this new album. Uh, but before we go there, I want to talk about a specific moment for Good Charlotte from this summer. So sort of speaking about the old days, on July 29th, you played a surprise set on the very final Warp Tour. Yes. And, you know, I don't think you can overstate the importance of Warp Tour in sort of creating and defining the movement that you guys come from. So tell me a little bit about what you felt playing that show. Um, it was it was um, it was bittersweet. It was really it was really a uh, lot of good memories. I mean, the, you know, a lot of the crew on that tour have worked on that tour for twenty years. So um, it was a lot of catching up with old friends and yeah. a lot of people that we've remained really close with through the years. Um, and you know that tour. I feel like, you know, Kevin um, uh, Lyman, who put the tour together, and he, he was the inventor of the Warp Tour, and he was on every single one of them. Um, and he was kind of the mayor, you know? If you're on Warp Tour, Kevin walks around and, you know, he checks on everyone. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, and, um, and he's a really special guy. I mean, he really he stuck to his he's – a, he's a very kind of like punk rock ethos um, – uh, one of the greatest guys in the music business, one of the most straightforward, honest, you know, just um, he's one of the good guys, you know, and um, he really kept that that tour was was um, Kevin didn't do that tour for money. He really did that tour for because he wanted to uh, there to be this kind of um, home base in the scene for young bands who needed to kind of cut their teeth and and then the older bands who needed to come back and get in front of young audiences and um he really had that tour on his back the whole time and just kept it going for 22 years i think um and uh it was it was great to just get to go back and yeah. and uh you know we've remained close friends and done a few things together but it was great to just get to go back and say say thank you to everyone and bye to everyone and then to see that you know it's a funny stage the Warped Tour stage you play 30 minutes you have <laughs> you know it's a throw and go there's no sound check there's no you're not it, like make sure your gear is not complicated and you're not trying to put on you know the this Super Bowl halftime show because you just you know you throw your gear up and you play for 30 minutes doesn't matter and you know that's the thing that he's done through the years it didn't matter how big your band was or if you were just starting out Everybody played the same 30-minute set, and it was random every day. There wasn't um, a hierarchy. Mm-hmm. It was just um, he, he decided, Kevin decided when to put, you know, bands on. And every now and then if, uh, you know, every now and then if he read an interview that pissed him off or he said, you know, he puts you on at 11 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Did you go on at 11 a.m.? Oh, oh, sure, sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, we didn't go on at 11 a.m. that day. Uh, but, I wouldn't uh, say so, no. Yeah, but uh, he, it was really great, man. So a lot of good memories. The, the reason I bring this up is I think for a lot of young people, the Warp Tour was this place you could go to feel accepted. Like even if you were from a small town where there wasn't anyone who looked like you, anyone who dressed like you. And I think your band has played that role for a lot of people as well. Well, like for instance, your first album began like this. Yeah, this song is dedicated is good to every kid who ever got picked last <laughs> in yep. gym class. This is for you. To every kid who never had a date to no school dance. This is for you. To everyone who's ever been called a freak. This yeah. is for you. Here we, here we go. So that's the start of the song, Little Things yeah. from Good Charlotte. It feels like that's been your mission since the beginning, though, in all seriousness. Yeah. Support for alienated kids. Yeah, you know. It's interesting, man. Um, I think it's you know. I think that all of us have have this. Um, what I like to kind of call. Uh, I mean, a lot of people have a different um, a different name for it. Inner child, shadow. You know. I think that all of us have this uh, this this young person inside of us who we were and still are, who stays. You know. Um, however far away or close to us as we keep them, you know? Um, and I think that um, we certainly felt really um, – our, our childhood's a lot longer than, our, than, than any other part of our life. Yeah. Um, just mathematically, if you think about from the age of 1 to 10, a year is, you know, uh, 
when you're 10 years old, a year is 10 percent of your life, and yeah. it feels like 10 oh, yeah. percent of yeah. your life. Yeah. Now, you know, I'm almost 40. Years get start to go by a little faster. I know. I've started lying about my age, not because I'm lying about my age, but because I keep on forgetting how old I am. Right. You know, you I, have to double check. Yeah. I'm like, oh, wait, wait, I'm, wait, I'm, th- I'm what? Yeah, yeah. A year has gone by that fast. And don't feel bad. I, I, I was sitting with my my brothers and and uh, sister not too long ago. We got together, and I couldn't remember how old any of them were. Uh, yeah. And we're just all, you know, it's like it just starts. And and I and I still think forty is yeah. young, but like you can remember how old your twin brother was, though. Yes, right? yes, okay, that would be <laughs> yeah, that, no. would, that would be more troubling to me. No, I got that, but um, <laughs> but it's weird because I think that um, that part of your life really shapes you and molds you. And I think at a certain point, um, whether it was because we, we if it was financial or whether it was because of maybe self inflicted or maybe it was just because we. We had, uh, you know, we came from a rough situation, and 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 in, in the town we were in, everyone kind of knew, and you knew, you knew who was, you know, who's who got evicted from their house, and you know, we, okay. you know, that that happened to us, and um, and I think that we turned to, you know, kind of like bands like Rancid, and and you know, Social Distortion, and you know, <clears throat> um, you know, the Smiths and Morrissey and The Cure and um, you know, Green Day and when, whatever music we could find that was coming out at that time that made it okay to go buy your clothes at a thrift store and dye your hair green and and um, and feel like you were part of something, you know. And I think that uh, there were days when I and I re- and I remember, you know, really clearly, just you you'd ride the bus to school and and we lived really far out in the country. It was a long ride and it was. Um, you know, our house at the time didn't have heat, and we, we you're just kind of like it's a long morning already, and you're yeah. going to school, and you're like, oh man, I'm about to go get my ass kicked all day, and mm. I really didn't want to go today. So you have this, you remember Walkman, you know, a little Walkman, and you know, a CD or a cassette or whatever it was, and and you would just listen to this, you know, rancid record or whatever record it was, all all the way until you could, because it just kind of gave you the confidence that you felt like you were part of something to go into school and and um, try and do your day. And when we started making music, um, that we, we really had only a couple goals. And one was that we really wanted to get our mom a house. Um, and that was, a, that was the reason we kind of were like, that was the number one reason why we were trying to have success with our band. Really? And anything past that was like a bonus, right? Yeah. Um, do you remember when you got it? Yeah. First check I got. The first check I got. <laughs> the first check I got. You I bought, got, you bought yeah, a house. Yeah. I got my mama house. What yeah. a great feeling that must be. Um, it was a good feeling, man. Um, and and then the the other reason that we 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 wanted to have success with our band is because every record we, when we would go into the studio, it was like that song you just played was on our first album. And if you really kind of dug through our catalog, you'll find moments all over our records where we're really kind of reaching out to the kid who's on the bus on a freezing morning, who doesn't have any money, who's not going to eat lunch today, who's listening to that record to get him through the day. Yeah. And maybe that record reaches him, maybe it doesn't, but we're really kind of sending those SOSs out there. Just, just uh, you know, their messages in a bottle. Just we're, we're, we, On every record, we try to create a couple of moments where we kind of are trying to reach out to that kid who's listening for the same reason I was and just... Um, and just letting them know that like life, it gets better. Like you know, you get through this period mm-hmm. if you tough it out. Mm-hmm. Um, don't let it make you a hateful person. Don't let it make you, uh, you know, let don't let it change you. Um, stay who you are. Be yourself. And you're gonna get through this. And then you're gonna do something incredible um, if you if you choose to. And, and you, you must have people come up to you all the time and tell you those things. I mean, I can only imagine people must come up to you either, I don't know if you still get out to the merch table or something like yeah, that. Like yeah, yeah. If you do, people must come up to you and say, you know, that song saved my life or changed my life. Man, you know, it's the, it's the, it's, it's, um, it's still to this day uh, happens all the time and it's even with an, even a younger crowd now. I mean, I, I have, you know, 16, 17, 18 year old kids come up and, and, and it's funny because the stories don't change. Yeah. And, you know, social media has come along. The world changes. We were talking about this before the interview started. We're living through a crazy time right now. And I've never seen anything like it. The world continues to go through phases and go through changes. But humans don't change. We all have this, like, painful existence at, at some point in our life. And um, we, you know, I still get those stories all the time. And um, it's still 
uh, awesome to connect with people and have a moment, you know, um, and it's something that, um, you know, I'm really, you know, because I don't know. Our band's never won a Grammy. We've never had, you know, the a number one record. Right. Um, we've we've come close a few times. Yeah. And we've always, you know, we, I think we've always kind of we hovered around in like the you know third or fourth place, and, you know, and and, <laughs> and 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 we've always been okay with it, you know. Um, but, but I think for me, the thing that I, if I could take away from my career, because I, I don't think I'll do it forever. You know, I'm managing bands and producing records now, and. Right. Um, and I think we've definitely got a few more in us for sure. But um, but I, I don't know if I want to if I if I will be wanting to be on stage. I know certain some people like never give it up. I I, I I'm more connected to the writing process and to the create you know to the creative than mm -hmm. actually kind of the performing. And um, I can't say that we'll do it forever. But um, for me, I think the thing that we can we can be proud of is is that we I feel like we whether however small a group of people it was we really I think connected on a deeper level with with people and I think that's what we set out to do um, and we you know we got our mama house and, and we did that well, I think you're, I think you're still I think you're still doing it I mean I just want to play something uh, from from the new record take a listen to this I put my trust in all That's a little bit of actual pain from Good Charlotte from their latest record, uh, Generation RX. Benji Madden's joining me in studio to talk a little bit about the record and a little bit about the band. And that's that's that was written after Lil Peep died. Is that right? You, you don't have to get into it too much if you don't want. Yeah, no, that was um, it's fun. It's 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 not funny. It's 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 interesting and it's kind of um, it's really was very thought provoking. Um, I. You know, uh, Peep was uh, a fan of our band. So he was a great singer. He was a great rapper. He was a great musician. Oh, yeah. And and, and really kind of a really, I think, really innovative young artist who, who hadn't even just barely gotten started. I, I feel that he was a leader of, of kind of like a new wave and was just really innovative. And um, he was a fan of our band, and, and he had kind of reached out and told us that he had grown up on us and that our music meant something to him. And right. we had started becoming friendly, and um, we were talking about the possibility of, 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 of a tour and, and, you know, just some ways to collaborate. And it was um, just kind of getting, uh, you know, making contact and becoming friendly. And then um, he passed away. Yeah, he died of uh, an overdose of drugs that included fentanyl. Yeah. 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 And... It's interesting because um, it it just like really really struck me so hard and I don't I've had um, I've had unfortunately I've had a lot of friends pass away from drug overdoses yeah. um, and through the years as and as the years go on it's it's very interesting because when you're in your I, I think and it's it's not to not to downplay anyone who's younger but when you're in your twenties or you're a teenager or in your twenties I don't know if it hits you as hard. I feel like the older you get, you just value life a little more yeah, mm -hmm. in a way. Like, I mean, and I remember doing things that now I would never do. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you just, as you get older, you start to realize how fragile life is and how it's just, it can be gone in a second because you have some of these experiences. Yeah. And I mean, I remember um, the the day I went home, I, uh, the day I found out, I went home and told my wife and and it, even even she was struck by it. We, it was just really, really heartbreaking. And we were just like, you know, my, me and Joel and the, the band, we, we, were, we, were, we were really just kind of speechless. Um, and we couldn't quite figure out why. Of course, it was really sad, but it, it, was, it was almost as if someone that we, we were extremely close to and, and was a part of our family had passed away. Yeah. It was a very, it really struck us down. And then... Um, his mom reached out and asked us to do uh, something special for his memorial. So we did a cover of uh, of uh, a song of his called "Awful Things," and um, and it was really special for us. It was, you know, I, I can't really explain it. It was just a really special moment for us. And then um, when we were making the record, well. To be honest, I, I don't know if we had really planned on making a record, and at that point, um, 
And Joel, Joel was like, man, you know, man, I feel like I've just got some things to say and I don't know exactly what they are, but I feel like I need to get in the studio and just start letting them come out and let's mm. just see what happens. Um, and so I decided to produce this record because uh, I felt like he needed to, um, I felt like he really needed to, it needed to be, it was more of like a therapy thing than like we needed to be kind of critiqued and told, well, okay. you know, we kind of, I felt like it was less about the result and more about just like what we were going to, what was going to come out, you right, know? Right. Um, so after that kind of experience, we, we got in the studio and, um, and, and, you know, I think that, that, um, that Peep's death really touched a chord for us because I think we've, we've maybe had, you know, Maybe we hadn't um, fully dealt with some of our friends who had passed away, and some of the, you know, I think. You so keep, all that stuff starts to come back. Yeah, I think so, man. I think when you're young, you just keep moving, and you, you know, you shed a tear, and you, you sit with your friends, and you talk about how amazing these people were, but you keep moving because it's just too painful to yeah. to stop and go, wow, man, we're we're this this person is not isn't here anymore, and. Um, and um, so I think that it stirred up some things, and I think that um, Joel was right. I think he was he was like, I got to get some of this stuff out. And it's an interesting way he got it out because it never in listening to the record, these are really honest, really honest songs, and they never tread the line of like going across the line. And I mean this with the most respect into like being saccharine or being cheesy or right. being overly emotional. You know, like that's 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 a hard line to balance. Well, I'll tell you, we wrote this record. The idea behind this record was, um, and uh, it was an interesting experiment. Um, um, I We've never written a record since we started, uh, <laughs> this is going to sound, I, I, you know, I, since we started therapy, right? So me and Joel both we we um we we see a therapist and um oh, do you, do you, tell me whatever you want, but like, do you guys see the same therapist? Um, like, at we, the same time? Not at the same okay, time. Okay, no, okay. No, sorry. not at the same. time. When you time, said we see a therapist, no, but that's what I, I think wanted to know. Joel and I had never ever reached out to anyone to deal with any any kind of challenges, right? Um, and actual pain is interesting, man. We have a um, actual pain is actually a song about living in a family with mental illness. Um, and, um, if you listen to that song and you listen to the lyrics, um, uh, it might make more sense, but, um, we were, we, we've never, um, I don't, we'd never had, I think, uh, coaching as far as, um, kind of unwinding, you know, childhood uh, issues and traumas and oh, yeah, difficulties. Yeah, um, so I, I had, I had, um, kind of learned about stream of consciousness and I was like, you know. When when I think back to the very first and second record, the first two records, before we were aware of ourselves, before we kind of got, you know, either either criticized by someone and, and told what we were or what we weren't, before social media existed and we were, you know, um, uh, you know, you got to remember when social media kind of came came about, like you kind of took it a lot more seriously. I mean, so when people said things on social media, now we know people mm -hmm. go there to vent their just they'll spew anything that comes to their mind, you know, yeah. and, and no matter what, there, there's no line that people won't cross. I think now we all kind of understand that and we take the good and leave the bad. But I think you got to remember when it started, we were, um, we had already put out, you know, four albums. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, you know, you, you kind of have to get the hang of these things. And, um, and so I, I thought, like, what if we made when when I look back at like the first two albums before we were aware of ourselves and before we we had been in the world, we were still so green and didn't know anything. We really wrote stream of consciousness. We didn't sit down and go, okay, I'm gonna write a song like this. Mm -hmm. We just said, this feels good. We just sang words. I mean, I look back at some songs on earlier records that I had no idea what they were about. Really? Until this year. You know, I mean, I know I was. But they're I, not nonsense songs. I mean, they're not. They're no, not, they're no. not nonsense. But you're like, what? What is that song about? What was yeah. that? Why was I writing that? Right. You know. And then you, 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 you get to know yourself a little bit more. You get to kind of understand some of your what some of your past meant and mm -hmm. what it. You know, and you go back in your songs like take on like, there's a you know there's songs on our you know on our first and second record that are just straight up about depression. But you didn't know. I didn't know. Like, it. like what, I, if you don't mind me saying? Uh, so, like, there's a song on our first record called "The Motivation Proclamation." Mm -hmm. 
I had no idea what it was about. It rhymed and it felt good to sing, and the name was catchy. And I, I, I don't know. I thought it was yeah. at the time. I thought it was clever. I wrote it when I was, you know, seventeen or eighteen. Yeah. Um, and when I look back, I go, "Oh man, that guy was having a rough time, and he was trying to motivate himself, you know, and he was trying to get himself going, you know." And and I had no idea. It yeah. just, it just, you know. So that that happened, and and so I realized that the th- I think that our most compelling stuff was the stuff that we wrote before we were really aware of what we were doing. And it's and I think that me and my brother can 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 write a song. We've written songs for other people. We've written other records for other artists and and um and had success with that. We we can write songs. It's something I think that writing a song is one thing. I think expressing yourself and really connecting emotionally is a whole other thing. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what um, separates um, sometimes I think like pop music is it's 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 more built. It's more about the it's more about the the uh, what the paint job looks like, you know. And I think that act, you know I think the artistry of songwriting um, is is a whole other thing. And I think so for our band. Um, when I thought about that, I said I I said to Joel, I was like, you know, what if we what if we wrote this record a little differently? And I was like, I think I'm going to produce it so that we can actually do this because I don't think another producer would be able to put up with the process. But um, I was like, I, I don't want to plan anything. I don't want to try for anything. I want to go in there and, and like, let's, just, let's let our feelings lead us and just like, you know, we'll play some chords, we'll put some music down. We, we, we didn't write anything down. You know, we got in the booth and we just, we just sang melodies to music that were pulled out of us. And, and, sure, and sh- sure enough, Words just start to come out, and then memories start to come out, and then mm. you st- it, and then it takes you down this whole path of like, you know, things I hadn't thought about from my childhood, or things that that in years, mm. and it was pretty interesting. So every one of these songs is, uh, is is really completely um, was written stream of consciousness and deals with a really uh, visceral um, kind of memory or experience from childhood for me and Joel. It's really, it's a powerful record. If you're just tuning in, I'm speaking with Benji Madden of Good Charlotte. We're talking about the new album, Generation RX. I wanted to run this past year. So there, uh, there was a Florence and the Machine concert in Toronto the other day. I don't know if you know them. Uh, yeah. But at, at one point, she addressed the audience directly, and she said something to the effect of, like, hey, I know we're all going through a really dark time in this world right now, but we need to stick together. There's going to be a light. I have to tell you, like, I, I've been going to shows for a really long time. I have never heard as many of those proclamations on stage as I am hearing right now. I mean, I say it's, we, it's so weird to hear that because I've been, I haven't been to a Florence show in a while, but I mean, I say almost the same thing uh, before uh, we play uh, a song, um, the song actually prayers from our record. Um, uh, what do you say? Um, you know, I just tell everyone um, that... Um, in, the vibe at, at the show is so positive and so good that it's it's almost hard to imagine how crazy the world feels right now. Mm-hmm. When you know when I when I look outside, um, you know, and that it may seem um, and it, it well it is you know we're going through a really tough time, and I just ask everyone to consider um, when they leave this show to consider the idea that they could look at everyone that they pass on the street with compassion. Um, and th- I ask them to um, not to get tricked into uh, things like racism, um, inequality, sexism. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there seems to be this, w- this war going on. Um, and I think that the, 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 the people fighting it um, care less about the, you know, the, the, the effect it has on humanity and more about their, their, uh, objectives. Right. Um, so what responsibility do you feel as an artist then to have to say these kind of things? I mean, we we have a platform, we have a stage. I, I try, you know, and I have a, I, I have, I really feel, um, I know, and I know some people are the opposite. I I like to stay away from politics. Um, I realize that um, some people they, they make it their life's goal mission. Um, my politics are 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 just something that I, I like to stay away from. I, but we also just have uh, this platform, and I think when 
when you get when you get to the point where you can't even turn the news on anymore. I mean, you know, in our household, it's like we can't we can't have it on. It's just too depressing. It's too. Um, I mean, obviously, I check in. I try to stay up to date. I, I listen to NPR. You know. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. But but. Um, we, we we do feel responsibility because we have this stage that whatever, um, you know, if it's two, 3,000 kids in front of us every night and we have their ear, we feel responsible for what we tell them and what they take away from that show. And, you know, even if it's just a handful of people that take that thought and then go, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think about that, um, I think it's important to kind of uh, combat the, the, the darkness with uh, – you know, with positivity. You know? I, I wanted to ask you this as well. Um, and I, I hope you take this in the best possible way because this is definitely how I mean it. But I, I think right now we're also having a big conversation in our culture around the idea of fame, the impact of fame. Um, you're, you're a very famous guy. Your band's very, very famous. At one point when I, was, when I was 16, 17 years old, there was kind of no one more famous in my entire life than Good Charlotte, you know? And everyone was wearing <laughs> everyone. But you guys are still mm. hewing, you guys are doing bigger numbers in the UK than you've ever done. Um, your wife is famous. I'm wondering now in 2018, because you were famous before social media, you were famous before um, a, a, lot of, a lot of the kind of trappings of our society right now. What's, what's your relationship with fame right now? How has it evolved? It's, it's interesting, man. I find it to be, um, oh, man, you know, I feel like we're in, part, we're in this evolution that hasn't quite finished yet. We're, I feel like as a society, if we see someone, you know, almost – dying on the side of the road, we're more likely to film them than to help them. Mm. And so that is something that I've noticed. And um, I think that it's it's almost like this TMZ culture, right? Where nothing's off limits. And we're, we're just, if we're out in the world, we, we, we might as well be at the zoo, mm -hmm. you know? Um, <laughs> and, and, and there's no, um, th there doesn't seem to be that that's the way it feels when you look around. I think we see, you know, kind of that um, that all over the place on social media, where where it's we, we it's it, people are going to click on it, you know, and and that's what people want. They want they want likes or clicks, you know. And um, I think that's an evolving. I think that's we're in we're in a process, though. You know, I don't think that we've landed there. I think we're in a process mm -hmm. because I still do think that people do have. Um, you know, integrity. And I think people do have, uh, you know, humanity. Um, you know, I meet amazing people everywhere I go. So I think that, that we're in a process right now. I think that, um, as far as my relationship with fame, um, I, so I wrote a song called Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. I remember. So, yeah. uh, I don't, you know, I would, n I will never complain about my situation. Um, I've been able to, uh, change the entire trajectory and course of of uh, my family. I mean, my my um, nieces and nephews go to incredible schools. They're mm -hmm. they're um, before, you know, um, before we. Uh, my my brother went to college, um, and he was the first person to go to college in our entire family. So uh, that was. That's changed now. We're we're if if listen if they don't want to go to college, it's fine. But if they do want to go to college, they're going to be able to. Yeah. Um, they're the the entire trajectory and the kind of what the lives look like for my family um, has been has been changed. You mm -hmm. know. So I'm. So, so is that worth the like? I've seen this. I've seen like Benji and his wife went to go to get groceries, yeah. and I see. You know, this is how we handle it. We just don't have it in our house, so we don't know what anyone's saying about us right. um, ever. <laughs> so, so um, I, good. so so occasionally I'll be somewhere and someone will tell me something, or um, or I'll get a text from, and it's never close friends. It's it's like it's, it's someone peripherally. I, know. I just can imagine like, going to the grocery oh, store. Oh, is this know? true? And you're just like, oh my god, I, I didn't even know anyone was saying that. You know, mm -hmm. um, so we just keep it. You know. Um, we find that that is just better for us, and we're we're just really happy with that, you know. Um, <laughs> so there, to me, um, my understanding of fame is that it's mostly bad, um, just because um, you just kind of become fodder for people, and I don't think that's fun for anyone. No. Um, but it's also got some really good. It's also got some really good things to it. Like you, you, you can, um, you can. 
you know, you you can meet a kid on the street and they can say, hey, I really like that song. And you can go, well, tell me where you're from. And then they tell you some some story and you go, hey, man, listen, keep working hard. You're going to, you know, and you have moments like that. I don't know if that has to do with fame or the no. fact that you wrote a song, yeah. you know, yeah. like, so I, I think that the relationship has changed, though, because now you hear kids that just say, I want to be famous. Mm-hmm. And you say, well, what? Well, what do you want to do? And they go, I just want to be famous. So that's changed. I don't think that existed before. So I think that's a new thing in our society. But like I said, I think we're in, we're cycling through kind of a process. And I don't know where it lands, but there's probably some sort of help. There's probably some sort of balance that happens where where people, you know, uh, come up with some, with some, where we all just as a society come up with some kind of like, you know, kind of these unspoken um, uh you know, kind of like agreements that we make with each other, where what's wh- what's too far, what's not, yeah. you know. And I, but I do think that I remember I got really upset. There was a um, there was a video circulating on um, Instagram uh, <clears throat> with a young um, uh, XXX Tentacion when he when you know when he was shot and killed. There was an there was a video of him in his car, and it, all these people just passing it around on Instagram and I just felt like that that was a line where you just have to have yeah. some humanity you know and it just broke my heart I yeah. I I I it, I couldn't I couldn't go on Instagram you know and and um and I think that unfortunately like there's going to be some things where I think um we're going to have to go through this process and we'll land somewhere I think in the in the middle and um um but like I said I, I would never complain but I would I would say that if you could, if you could do, um, if you could do the the art with without, <laughs> without having without the grocery store photos, yeah, wouldn't that, that be great? Yeah, and yeah. if you so for me and for me, I kind of have a thing where it's like if if um if I can tell someone's like a, a music fan, I'll spend all day long. I mean, I'll 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 stop wherever I am, and I I love talking music, and mm-hmm. I love talking to people about lyrics. Um, if someone just you know, uh, has seen me uh, for whatever reason, you know, because of my wife mm-hmm. or whatever it is. I, I, you know, listen, I, I try not to be rude. Um, I try to be, uh, you know, um, <laughs> but I also treat people with the same way they treat me, you know? Right. So if, if, you know, if, if, if it's, if we're acting like we're, we're at a zoo or something, I go, Hey, you know, like we're, we're not, we're, we're here in the world, and, and, and you know, and I'd much rather say hello to someone and have a nice, you know. So, so it's um, I like I said, I think we're cycling through like this, like this uh, as a society, this like process that's that you know, mm-hmm. like you think about it, started probably like twelve, fifteen years ago, something like that. Yeah. You know? So it's gonna take a while, but we're gonna we're gonna work it out. Yeah. I I, uh, I want to close off like this. Um, you, you mentioned something earlier where you said that the um, you know, you, you're thinking you might not be on um, the road forever you might not be on stage forever you're enjoying yeah. producing your but um where do you want to see good charlotte go next before that are you because I, I have a feeling you guys aren't in a place of just maintaining I, f- I feel like there's still places you guys want to go i i do man i feel i feel like and i didn't always feel that way you know when we made the uh the record before this one it was kind of like the it felt like it was a warm-up like we were just kind of like we were just Getting getting our swing back and getting you know playing together again. Um, on this record, I I feel like we grew artistically, um, and I feel like we were able to find that. I feel that honesty. I don't think we had it for quite some time. I don't, I think we were in a little bit of a maze, and we we couldn't figure out like how to tap into that. And I think that we we finally opened that doorway again. And I think that um, there's there's. Yeah, I think that we've still got uh, some things to say. So I would, I would like to see us make a couple more records, and I would like to, um, I'd like to make one that really pushes forward um, and really that we grow um, and really do something maybe a little more ambitious. Um, and then I'd like to maybe do something that is uh, maybe a throwback. Oh, you know, yeah, a little old school. Yeah, Charlotte. yeah, I think a little so. Little first warp tour. Yeah, exactly. It's nice fast. to meet you, man. Thanks yeah, for, you too. Thanks for coming in. Yeah.